Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. In this video, we're going to show you two hives here. It's a neat setup. It's a colony stacked over a double deep, powerful colony, and it's really helped this colony grow faster. Also, check this out right here. Pretty cool, huh? We've really stopped feeding pollen patties by and large, but this one was a little bit smaller. It came out of winter with about three and a half frames of bees, and as you can see right now, it looks way better than that. A lot of people were telling me that this was going to kill the bees because it's going to mess up with all the condensation and everything that's going to build up on here. That was not the case at all. What I did see, though, all winter long, and I observed this. I mean, I come in here, you know, I want to get into the colony, but I check underneath the lid, and you could see little bits of droplets of condensation on here, but as they would build up, they would go to the edges, and um, the only moisture problems I ever saw was always towards the edge, and the cluster was always dry, just and that's the way it's supposed to work. So it worked good for me. The cool thing is you can see how much pollen patties left if you use sugar bricks or anything like that. You can see how much is left in there and watch the bees do their thing without breaking this seal right here. And again, the nice thing with this setup is we had it over another colony. It's a really powerful colony, so the heat from that colony is also coming up in here. Let's, let's check them both out really quick. I remember where I put my veil. Really windy today. And, you know, for those of you who may think that, oh, well, maybe you don't get a lot of moisture, a lot of rain in, in your area. We got four inches yesterday. We get a lot of rain here in Tennessee. Condensation's going to happen. Strong, healthy clusters push it away. And, and good hive setups are, are important, too. But give me healthy bees first and foremost. They really help push that moisture away from the cluster. Nice and sealed around there. Just gonna give them a little bit of smoke. Just kind of let that work its way around. It's kind of cool. You get to see it um, actually happening, and that'll just kind of block that pheromone, alarm pheromone. This colony's not quite ready to go out on its own yet. Um, I'm gonna guess that it's still probably around six frames of actual bees. It's just they have a you know, they, they go to the top of the box. So when you smoke them, it obviously doesn't look near as impressive. All right, wow. I don't know what that side looks like, but I like what I'm seeing over here. So there's just tons of eggs over here. Lots of eggs. But over here, I'm starting to see the makings of a good pattern. Really happy with that. And oh, the next frame's got a good bit of cap brood as well. That's interesting. That frame's pretty light. We might need to give this one a little bit of sugar syrup. Obviously, this isn't going to be a honey production colony. Honey production colonies need to be like the colony we're going to get into below. All right, so we have a bunch of bee bread here, a little pocket of capped brood. The next frame over, it looks like it's nothing but food. Doggone it. Well, haven't done that one in a video in a while. Boy, that always feels good, nice and deep in the finger. And we got a little bit more brood over here and lots of bee bread. That's fantastic. All right, we're going to stick this back in here. The temperature today is probably, if you take the wind out of the equation, upper 50s. With the wind, it definitely feels like it's about 50 degrees, maybe a little warmer than that. Whoops, there goes the pollen patty. And we've just got a nice, wow, okay, check this out. They're capping all this. We've got a great queen in here. This colony, though, is really benefiting from being over that strong colony below, just sending all that extra heat up. I'll show you that in a minute. Look at that nice pattern there. It's excellent. We're going to check one more frame. And then we are going to drop down below and see what we've got. Yeah, I can just feel all the heat coming out of here. Very nice. Oh, there goes the pollen patties. Lots of calf brood here. And more calf brood here. So it won't be long. And we will definitely have this one in a box all of its own. So let's put this one back together and drop down. 
So as I was referring to a little bit ago with the healthy cluster pushing the moisture away, the bees generate a lot of heat. As that heat goes up, it pushes air that's cooling to the side and it should go to the side and the moisture and the condensation should drip down the walls to the bottom board. However, strong colony, and weak colonies cannot do that very good. Strong colonies can. As the air cools, that's how condensation happens. Hot air holds more moisture in it. As it cools rapidly, so if it contacts something cold, it cools rapidly and the, it can't hold as much water and it squeezes out of it. The water does. All right, I got a good bit of weight there. You can see how there's a little bit of wasted pollen patty, but really not a whole lot. I dropped these down below. You can see this screen right here. It's a double screen board. This would be good to scrape this. So we're gonna go ahead and let's see what's going on down here. A little smoke. Oh yeah, very nice. We're just gonna set that right here. One thing we wanna do is make sure that colony below, the queen's not on this board. Sometimes they'll be resting from a hard day of egg laying up in the top where it's nice and warm. And we're not going to go through both deep boxes in here. There's no reason to. We're just going to give them a general inspection. Make sure that they have the room and resources that they need. We're just going to pop here into the center. There we go. Make sure this colony's laying good. This colony needs moved to a different bee yard, I think. Well, plenty of drones being made on this frame, goodness. Probably need to move that frame towards the outside where she can't lay in it quite as much. Emerging bees over here. So all this was probably capped just a day or so ago. All right. Both of these queens are 2020 queens, top box and the bottom. Yeah, look at that nice pattern right there. And you can see up in here there's larvae and different things. And also, one thing I'm seeing about this frame is look at this. This is the perfect looking nutrition frame. So we've got bee bread right in here, that's important. And we've got food right in here above the brood frame, looking really good. I'm looking down, I'm seeing some frames that have um, resources in them. Uh, mm -hmm. One more thing that I'm going to do really quick. So this is what I would do for a general inspection right now. We're popping through a lot of colonies making sure they don't have swarm cells. Obviously this queen has got what we want. Looks fantastic. Building up honey production size colony. Honey, honey flow is not here quite yet so it should be just about timed right. Want to make sure that there's no queen cells down in here being formed. There shouldn't be. I believe I just rotated the boxes on this one last week. So we're looking down in here, smoke the bees up, and looking at these queen cups right here. And you know this one's dry. That one has a little bit of something built up on it, but it still is dry. You got one here, dry. And that one's dry. That's dry. So, I mean, there's a good chance they're all dry. They don't look like they're in the swarm mode. Once they really get that going, they'll usually have multiple ones that have something in them. So, I'm good with that. I don't worry about checking that bottom box. I'm going to put this back together. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. They just need about another week or so, and this box is going to be so plugged, we're going to have to move them to a, another yard and put some honey supers on it. I don't have to move it to another yard, but I have better honey production yards than this one for sure. So now we just take all this, put it together. And then I like to um, push this down and kind of seal that back up a little bit. But again, I was 
I watch this uh, about every other week at least I come out here and look at this and I wasn't seeing any major issues with it at all so anyways this has been fun to watch this Kloss Hive Dome work I'm not gonna be buying them for all of my hives because I don't think it's that awesome but it is cool to be able to look at your bees and you can see what your foodstuffs are and um, personally I think if the the colony has got a healthy cluster then it shouldn't be an issue thanks for watching this video if you have any questions leave it below